want to start this show off today by talking about children. Well, because I'm a mom and we have many moms that watch and many moms here in the studio as well. And today we're talking about being in the hospital. Everybody knows that being in the hospital can actually be confusing and tiresome, but especially if you're a child. The UC Davis Children's Hospital is working towards minimizing the anxiety of hospitalization through art therapy. So here to explain more is art therapist. We have Katie Lorraine. Katie, great to have you here. And um, I myself, I'm actually a really big fan of art therapy. I know it can do some really tremendous things for individuals, especially for children, right? They have a hard time kind of communicating their feelings and exactly. what they're going through. But help our viewers understand who may not be as familiar with art therapy, give some examples. What, what would be art therapy? So art therapy is a form of psychotherapy that uses art within sessions as a means to facilitate communication, to express negative emotions, and explore conflicts of the unconscious. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, what are the, the major benefits of doing something like art therapy? So one of the major things about art therapy is that it's a totally nonverbal communication. So it can be less intimidating to paint a picture about how you are feeling mm -hmm. than talk about it. And so this is especially helpful for children who are still going through brain development and might not even have the vocabulary to communicate their experience. Mm -hmm. So we have this medium to express themselves and to share their story. Yeah, and this is something UC Davis Children's Hospital does with the mm -hmm. children at the hospital, right? Yes, we yeah. believe in a family-centered approach. So we offer art therapy not only to our pediatric patients, but also their families. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. So it's something the entire family can kind of Mm -hmm. come together and maybe even be a bit of a bonding experience. Completely. They regard. can make positive memories, which is mm -hmm. very crucial in a hospital yes. environment. Yes. And it can empower parents to be able to care for their child during this difficult time. Absolutely. Uh, tell me some of the projects that you've done. So we believe in creating as many choices that we, as we can for our children. So they can choose from making a painting or um, making a dream catcher or a sculpture out of clay or even a movie. Oh um, wow, really? Yeah, we just received a grant from Children's Miracle Network. So mm -hmm. we have a filmmaker that comes once a month um, from Bay Kid Studios and she works with our Child Life and Creative Arts Therapy Department and we make movies about our children's experiences. They can make documentaries, stop motion animations using Legos. Wow! And yeah, it's, it's an exciting thing. If they want, they can choose to put on YouTube to really share their story with the greater community. That is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, what a fun. great outlet. And, mm -hmm. and I love the fact too that you point out that for children this is uh, specifically beneficial because of the fact that they don't have the skills yet to communicate with vocabulary, mm -hmm. but this is also a great opportunity, like you mentioned, for the parents, because mm -hmm. sometimes art, I think, for adults can also bring out some emotions that they weren't even aware of, right? Right. Yeah, it, it kind of helps them bring it to the forefront, and mm -hmm. then they are able to deal with it in a healthier, mm -hmm. healthier way, which is kind of what you're doing. Uh, you have a group of young adults that you're working with, helping mm -hmm. them with bereavement, right? Mm -hmm. We have a young adult bereavement art group that I co-facilitate with John Lewis, who is a social worker at our hospice program. Mm -hmm. And so that serves young adults ages 17 to 24 who are going through the grieving process. Um, it was created almost 10 years ago to fill a gap in services between mm -hmm. the existing child and adult support groups in the community and to give our young adults an opportunity to meet people their own age who are mm -hmm. going through experiences like grief and loss which mm -hmm. many people in their social circle haven't experienced that yet yeah and so yeah. they may feel kind of isolated yeah and we know how important it is too to have community and know mm -hmm. that you're not alone, especially when dealing with something with such gravity to it, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. Um, do you have to be a patient at UC Davis Children's Hospital in order to be a part of this group? No, the group is completely free and open to the public. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the, uh, the bereavement that they're dealing with, does this have to be something that's recent or can it be mm -hmm. something they've been dealing with for a while? No, it doesn't have to be a recent loss. We realize that grief is so complicated and everyone grieves differently and it changes over time. So we have previous group members who have lost somebody as a child, but only now as they're entering their teen and adult years that they're realizing the magnitude of that loss, yeah. realizing that the their mother won't be them. there at their wedding and it's re-triggering that loss and they need support, which is where our group comes in. That's fantastic. It's yeah. so awesome to know that this is a such a priceless resource and benefit mm -hmm. here in our community. So where can our viewers go so they can find out more and, mm -hmm. and perhaps uh, find that outlet for themselves? They can visit our website at children.ucdavis.edu. The following interview involves commercial content. The products and services featured appear as paid advertising. 